So welcome people on Periscope. I am here at Camp Nerd Fitness uh, teaching my Viva Las Veggies class. And so I won't be able to answer any of your questions. And if you guys are trolls, I can't block you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you guys can watch and hopefully kind of see what I'm doing here. Uh, and that's it. And hopefully, I think this should, I think you should be able to see. Put this up just a tad. Yeah, I think it works. Last time I fiddled it with it too much and it broke. Um, so welcome everybody and thank you for coming. So this class is all about making lots of different types of vegetables in lots of different ways because as you guys know, paleo is not just about eating vegetable or no, eating meat. <laughs> <laughs> because I think when people first go paleo, they kind of forget about the vegetables, at least I did. And I was just eating all this meat and bacon because it was all stuff that wasn't on my plate before. Um, and then I realized that I was getting the meat sweats and I was eating too much meat <laughs> and that I should incorporate vegetables again. And so my plate these days is really, um, like I'll have a piece of protein that's about the palm, size of my palm or the size of my hand. So it's kind of like how it used to be, maybe a little bit bigger than it used to be because I was a semi-vegetarian. <laughs> and then the rest of my plate, instead of being just a giant thing of whole grain pasta, or bread, or whole grain pizza, or whatever else that I put on because it was like healthy, is like vegetables. Um, and these are all different types of vegetables. And I always try to have two types of vegetables on my plate. Um, and because I want dinner on the table quickly, I always try to do kind of two different cooking methods so that they can all be finished at the same time. So what I'm gonna demo today is my roasted vegetable out of mash, um, which is kind of like an alternative to mashed potatoes, but I think it's tastier because it's got um, parsnips and carrots and cauliflower and roasted garlic, and so it's really tasty, and you can trick your kids into trying a whole bunch of different vegetables with this dish. It totally, You can totally make it ahead, and you can keep it in your fridge. It reheats really well, so it's a perfect dish for Thanksgiving. And in fact, um, you know, it was part of my Thanksgiving menu last year, and I have a video that shows exactly how to do it. Um, you know, it's all like edited nice. <laughs> um, so you guys can watch that, and it's linked in my recipe. And so all of these recipes, except for my big ass salad at the end, um, is on my website. And the big ass salad doesn't really have a recipe, and you'll you'll see when I when I throw that together. But this is one that is like simmered, and you can make it ahead, and it freezes well, it refrigerates well totally make it for Thanksgiving and you won't have to worry about one of your veggie side dishes. I have roasted Brussels sprouts. Um, normally I have that with bacon um, and it does taste better with bacon. Um, <laughs> so I'm not making it with bacon today, but it's definitely that, you know, it is a big punch of umami and you guys um, should do that. Uh, I also have my sweet potato hash, um, which is a super fast sauteed dish that um, you know, we eat a lot. It's, it's what I call a desperation dinner. It's like when I don't have time to cook. Um, it's a quick thing that you can throw together um, and I, you can top it with two eggs and you are fine and dandy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is the roast garlic auto mash because this one kind of takes the most time and while it's simmering, I can start doing all the other stuff. And please feel free to ask questions throughout. Um, like I think during my first cooking demo, People were just asking questions and it, I think it, I, it's totally cool. So don't don't feel like you have to wait till the end. And again, you don't have to take notes. Everything, my, there's a podcast episode devoted to vegetables um, in our podcast archives. I think it's called Viva Las Veggies. And I think it's episode four. It links to all the recipes that I think I mentioned, except for the big ass salad. Um, and so you don't have to take notes. I'll tell you when to take notes. Like if I mention something that I don't have like on the internet, then I'll tell you what to write down. Um, so this here is a big pot. I don't know that you necessarily need a pot quite so big, um, but this will work. Um, I'm gonna crank it up to, that's good, like medium. And let's see what I have here. because I didn't prep it, I, I, I have to figure out what's in here. Um, so this is heating on 
medium. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of olive oil. You can use ghee. Ghee is actually my preferred um, cooking fat, but olive oil is actually okay as a cooking fat. I think initially a lot of people were, were um, cautioning against cooking with olive oil, um, but there have been lots of recent articles about how it's totally okay. You don't wanna like have it super, super hot. I mean, because like anything, you don't wanna have like cook anything at like 500 degrees but olive oil is perfectly fine. So I'm gonna throw in some onions. Oh yeah, see that's pretty hot. These little gas burners are pretty cool. Do you know what this is? Does it say, like, can I? I guess I can find out. Uh, so I'm just gonna stir this around just a little bit hotter. So all I'm doing is I wanna um, make sure that, uh, oh, you know, I have that. Thank yeah, you. That one's... Use. It's nice and yellow. Um, so that's that. I'm going to add a little bit of salt to this because I always like to add salt at every step. And the goal here is just to kind of um, cook them so they're translucent. You don't want to um, burn them because any burn flavor in here will continue to your um, your mash and believe me if you have kids they will complain about that. Yeah, like, what is that burnt flavor mash? <laughs> and I say it's dinner, you have to eat it. <laughs> um, and so people ask how I get my kids to eat um, my food and I'll be talking about that in my video in the wild talk um, as one of my topics. But you know, it really wasn't easy. It is way easier to just let, you know, the kids eat whatever and everybody's happy if they're eating mac and cheese. But then I, I think there was just a moment when I was cleaning up their stuff and I wouldn't eat their leftovers. And I was like, how is it, how is this okay? You know, that I'm not willing to eat their leftovers. And then I was like, I don't want to make something separate for them. Like, I'm not a short order cook. And I was like, and my mom never made us a separate meal. And so I was like, screw it, you have to eat whatever. <laughs> I'm making. But instead of it being kind of like, there was also compromise because, oh, now I'm going to throw in the rest of the vegetables. So the, the onions are translucent. Um, I'm going to throw in some carrots. And these are all raw and chopped, about the same size. Um, and so anyway, back to the story. So I make things that hopefully the whole family will eat. Um, and those are like the recipes on my blog and in my book, like crackled chicken, roasted broccoli. Um, don't normally get complaints. <laughs> and so don't like, I used to make like super spicy curries and things, but there's just no chance at all that they would eat. And so I have stopped doing that. So I've put the vegetables in. There's some stock and water in here. If you want it to, you want this to simmer and to have everything be softened. And I'm gonna sprinkle some salt on top because you want this to be well seasoned. And as I said before in my first class, you don't wanna season at the very end. It's always better to just season a little bit as you're going. And so, Got my bitch. Huh? Um, I'm assuming I don't know, <laughs> but I know I would use. You can use chicken stock. I use whatever bone broth I have. Like people are like, oh no, I have like bone broth, like pork and beef. It should be okay. My only broth that I'm not um, a big fan of to cook with all the time is just lamb bone broth because I think that's a pretty strong flavor. Um, and then I think fish stock. I'm not a huge fan. But if you like it, I mean, please, by all means. Okay. And so then I have a roasted garlic bear. And these are really easy to make ahead of time and you can make a bunch of them. And then you can keep them in the freezer. And I don't know, has, has everybody here tried roasted garlic? Because they're really, really different from raw garlic. So a lot of times people avoid raw garlic because it's so sharp and um, it can be really spicy. But roasted garlic makes it really mellow and really nice. And in fact, back when I used to eat a lot of bread, <laughs> which wasn't, you know, which was like five years ago, I 
would roast garlic and you can spread it like butter or you can mix it with butter and put it on stuff. So you could probably still do that with like sliced vegetables or whatever. But um, basically, and in my recipe, I show exactly how you do it. You can put these in little ramekins, like covered ramekins. You add a little bit of olive oil or ghee, salt and pepper, and you cover it and then you bake it for like close to an hour. But you can do a bunch of these. If you don't have little ramekins, you can put them in little foil, like sealed foil packets. Um, but they should just squeeze out. Like the top just, you know, is cut and you just squeeze them out. And this adds a really, really, really nice flavor. Um, you just have to make sure you don't put in all the skin. <laughs> That's good. And some people stress out like, oh, my garlic head is like bigger. And like, how, how many exactly is it? It's like, it's whatever you have, <laughs> you know? And if you don't have that many, um, you know, cloves of garlic, then it just won't be quite as garlicky, but you can also, you know, add more onions in, you can use shallots. There's no kind of set, um, you know, amount of uh, alliums. So alliums are like onions, garlic, um, that kind of stuff. Can I get it like a towel or a napkin? Um, thank you. And so this has come to a boil. So I'm just gonna cover this and I'm gonna let this simmer until it's tender. So it takes about um, 30 minutes and then I'll go and do some other stuff. And when this is all super tender that you can cook with a fork, um, you just blitz it with an immersion blender and that's it. So I'm gonna add a little pepper. because that just circulates the hot air and so everything um, cooks more evenly and it's faster uh, otherwise you can like bump up the temperature maybe 25 degrees and then you just have to rotate and stir more often um, but when I'm in a rush it's nice to just have that out of the way and one thing I always do is I always preheat the oven if I know I'm going to use the oven I preheat as soon as I walk into the kitchen because then I don't have to wait for um, you know that to heat up but if you have convection, and even if you're not gonna use the convection of it, the function, which I don't know why you wouldn't, um, <laughs> you should preheat on convection because that will preheat your oven faster than if you just preheat regularly. And so basically with Brussels sprouts, you wash them, you cut the ends off, but they're all prepped for me so I don't have to, but you cut the ends off and a lot of times if there are extra leaves that fall off the top, I collect those and I have a Brussels sprouts chips recipe that I make a lot in the fall because I make Brussels sprouts all the time, but I feel like one batch of Brussels sprouts doesn't produce enough chips. And I kind of stockpile it and you can, you know, stockpile it for the week. And then at the end of the week, I make Brussels sprouts chips. So that's what you guys should do. <laughs> Um, and I, I have been to restaurants where they actually peel off all the leaves and that's how they make Brussels sprouts chips, but I mean, who, had time, who has time for that? I don't. So um, these I just throw onto uh, a really big, um, most people do not have a, a baking sheet quite so big. This is a full sheet. So if you're ever buying on Amazon, do not buy a full sheet unless you actually have an oven that will accommodate this. And mine is not this big. So most people, a half sheet is the perfect size, and that's what I always use. Um, so a half sheet would be like that, see? And there's plenty of room still. And the, the key 
too. But restaurants use full sheets, because obviously. And if you have an oven that accommodates full sheets, you should do a full sheet, because you're gonna cook it once, and then you'll have tons and tons of leftovers. So if you can, make more if possible. And also, another thing about, see, I, I always have these things that I really, really like, and I will try to convince you to do it. So the whole thing with convection, <laughs> roasting, you can do two trays because it's the hot air circulating, it will cook the two trays. Whereas if you just have a regular oven, you know, you'll have to keep on switching them. Even with convection roast and you're doing two trays, I would recommend switching them, but then you have two trays of roasted vegetables in the same amount of time. And my whole thing is, if you can have leftovers and your that will be your lifesaver. And for this, you can use melted you can use melted coconut oil, you can use olive oil. So I just sprinkle a little bit on top. And depending on how I'm feeling, I sometimes just do, you know, salt and pepper. Um, if there's a spice blend I really like, I'll just, you know, sprinkle it on top. Oh, yeah, there's more olive oil. Here, um, I'm going to check on this. And I, you know, I do the same technique for all of my vegetables. Like my kids' favorite vegetable is roasted broccoli. And so we have roasted broccoli almost every day. <laughs> um, because I know it's something they'll eat. Um, and I always try to do a second vegetable side as well. So I know that there's at least one they will eat. And I do it in the toaster oven um, in case I'm already baking something in my other oven. And it's just so easy. I always, I mean, the toaster oven is also one of my favorite things. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of pepper. And then you just pop this in the oven, and then at the end, even if you don't add any extra seasoning, if you add a little bit of fresh lemon juice or your favorite vinegar, it really does make the flavor pop. Um, and have you guys ever roasted Brussels sprouts? Or, no, you should try it. Are you guys not Brussels sprouts fans? Oh, that's good, because some people hate Brussels sprouts, um, but then when they've tried it roasted, they really, really like it, because it really, the high temperature like caramelizes it and mellows it, and it's really good, and it's surprisingly, my roasted Brussels sprouts and bacon recipe is my most popular recipe on the site, which I was very surprised to find out. <laughs> um, and the key is to make sure everything is the same size. And then this, I would just pop in the oven, I think by the magic of Camp Nerd Fitness, they will be bringing some out in a little bit. And then I'm gonna, oh, you know what? You could probably bake this too. Yeah, we can totally bake this. Yeah. Um, I guess I can't make, I can make the big ass salad, because I think I can't make the sweet potato hash um, until this burner is done. But I think it'll be fine, because that one is a super fast recipe. The bacon I do at the beginning. So I just dice them really small, and then I just toss it on the tray. And it's better if they're not right on top of the Brussels sprouts, like if they can just be on the tray, they will actually crisp up, yeah. And the best way to dice bacon is to store it in the freezer. So what I do, um, when you store it in the freezer, it's way easier to dice. Um, and I like to store it in the freezer um, by three, in, in quantities of three pieces of bacon because that seems to be the right amount for whatever I'm using, and you can always get more if you need more. But if you, um, you know, wrap them for three pieces, you take them out of the freezer, you can just slice them up, and it's super easy. You would, yes, you would take the bacon out of the freezer, and you would dice it, and then you would throw it onto the tray while you're, like, with all the other stuff, and you toss it. So you can, you can make vegetables very quickly. And the way I make sure that we always have vegetables, because sometimes, oh, actually, hmm. So <laughs> this was all really fast. I just realized that the reason why this was so fast is because someone prepped all these ingredients for me. <laughs> because in real life, I was like, you know, in real life, it, doesn't, it isn't quite so fast. But 
the whole point is, is if you do some prep work, like on the weekends, you can save them in like Ziploc bags, and then weekday prep can be just like this. And if you want to pay a little extra, you can buy prepped vegetables um, at the store, but you, you do pay for that convenience. Um, and they won't be quite as fresh as if you do it. But if that is the difference between you eating vegetables and not eating vegetables, then you should do that. And I always, um, in terms of lettuce, so here I am making my big ass salad. The, if you buy a head of lettuce, um, not one of those bags of like mixed greens, which I think is totally fine. If you buy the mixed greens, they go bad really fast. So you really do have to eat that right away. Um, but if you buy heads of lettuce, you should really wash and spin dry that as soon as you bring it home. Because I know for me at least, if I just have a head of lettuce, I'll just kind of let it turn all mushy and flighty. I'm like, oh, I can't eat this anymore. But if you wash it and it's done and ready, you will, you will do it. And it actually keeps better. So you just, when you get home, just wash it, spin dry it, however many it is. And you can, um, you can actually keep it in your salad spinner. And a lot of times people line the salad spinner with paper towel and then put your spun dry greens in there and then they're ready to go. Um, and another way that I have like instant veggies is I do have um, bags of frozen vegetables. Like I have frozen mixed vegetables. Um, I do frozen spinach and frozen kale a lot because those, you can, all of those things you can throw in, they're pre-washed, they're pre-cut, and there's no excuse for you not to eat vegetables. Yes, they won't taste quite as delicious as fresh vegetables, but then you can't complain about having to cut and wash your vegetables. <laughs> like, so you can't have it both ways. You have to just do it. So these, oh, these greens are so beautiful. So the way I make a big ass salad is I try to make sure I have a variety of greens. I try to clean out whatever is in my fridge. And look, in my fridge today, I happen to have tomatoes and wow, guacamole already. <laughs> like, that's really not my fridge. Eggs, because I do think if this is gonna be a meal for you, you need some protein. It can't just be vegetables, as great as vegetables are, you need some protein and some healthy fats to actually have it be satisfying and kind of um, do everything you need to do. Oh, and I can show you how I like to cut my bell peppers. Um, so this is how I do it. So my bell pepper, and I can't do it <laughs> with this. Yeah, I have this magical power where I can cut it with this spatula. But I actually put it um, stem side down, and then you can cut around. Oh, actually, here, I'll show you guys another trick. You know how this was all wiggly? You lay a towel down. And it won't wiggle anymore, and you won't cut your fingers off. Actually, I don't. Oh yes, people can see. It's so funny. I wonder if people ask in comments. Um, so then you just cut around, and if you see, the seeds mostly stay inside. And I'll show you. Um, and this last one. This part right here has all the seeds and all the stuff that you're trying to scrape out. <laughs> so I'll put this in the garbage bowl. Oh, and you know, if you wanted to, you can save this last part to eat. Like the, those are what I call like the cook snacks. Like if I cut an apple or cut whatever for my kids, like there's always extra for me. And so there may be a few extra seeds in here. Um, and if you want to take out the rib, you can, but a lot of times when you cut it that way, you don't have to worry about that. And then you cut it kind of however you want your vegetables in your salad. Like you can make it um, fancier if you have company, I guess. But if it's just you, just chop it however you like it. Like if you like it diced or if you like it um, in slices. Do any of you guys have any questions? Why are they so quiet? <laughs>
<laughs> wow, salad. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a question. You buy uh -huh. a head. Yes. And you talk about putting the spinner. Now, are you cutting it before you? Put oh it no. The yes. Spinner? Take it all. Take off all the leaves. Um, like whatever edible parts that you're gonna. I don't um, break it up super small. Um, I just kind of take off the leaves because I think the more you um, you know break it apart, there's more chance for it to brown and, and you know release its enzymes and stuff. So I will take off the leaves. I will throw away anything that's bad. Um, and I, I just leave the parts that I'm going to eat, but they may not be as small as they're going to eventually be in a salad. Another burner for you to join us after that. Oh, cool. Four burners, so. Yay, so I may, uh, it depends how fast I, okay, no I'm going to And we do have samples of Brussels sprouts oh. and samples of the roasted vegetables. Um, oh. The sweet potato mash we had the first day, so they're not sampling it today. Okay, but that's we cool. We had that the first day we were here. And then the, <laughs> um, what was the last one? Salad. Yeah, it's a salad. You guys have had salad, so it's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he told me. So, so the way I like, like to do. Uh, we're not going to make a salad. Okay. So the way I do my salads normally is I don't just put all of the leaves on the bottom. Um, I kind of layer it. Um, just because that way it's easier. And so carrots, you can do a lot of ways. And I don't have a vegetable peeler, but that is a really fun way to get carrots into your salad because then they're nice and thin and they're like, oh, noodles. Um, and I think my kids don't mind as much because if they have like chunks of carrots, like, ew, carrots. And then if they're like these thin little noodle things, they don't complain about it. So I don't know why. They just liked it. But they just have a knife. You can kind of cut them on the diagonal. You can zoodle them. Um, like if you guys have a spiralizer. Um, and depending on which spiralizer you have. Um, like if you have a little handheld one that you can just crank, that one I would probably use. Just because if I'm just making a salad, it's not worth it to wash the whole, um, like a giant spiralizer, unless I'm making a bunch of other stuff, because I'm lazy. Do you have a particular type of lettuce you prefer to cook with, like tomatoes, or um, not for them? Not for a salad. Um, well, I like like Little Gem, which is available uh, where I am, and it's almost like a baby romaine. But if I'm just making a salad, I just, I normally do like whatever the mix is. And then I like romaine, I guess. For um, lettuce wraps, I think the butter lettuce leaves are my favorite. Um, they photograph really well. <laughs> and also they, um, they hold really well and it's just a nice cup. Um, like I don't like iceberg lettuce. Really, and I don't think it's supposed to be very nutritious. It's just like water. All right, so that's like carrots. So this has I'm gonna have a carrot and a cucumber. I like this is a traditional cucumber. I really like. I mean, these are cool. I just like to scrape out the inside because there's too many seeds. The Asian cucumbers are really good, um, and then the Persian cucumbers are really good too. Because they're like little baby, um, uh oh, they're like, <laughs> I just dripped some condensation on that. They're like baby English cucumbers. I don't know if you guys have had the English cucumbers, but English cucumbers are really good because they don't have thinner skins and then they don't have, they have edible seeds in the middle. But sometimes they're too watery, I think, like with the, the center. And so the Japanese cucumbers, and they are, I think they're the Persian cucumbers, are just little versions of them, and they're like perfect. So this, I'm just kind of layering the different things, because I have a tendency when I toss, everything ends up at the bottom. So I try to layer different parts of it, um, so that when I, you know, put the olive oil and vinegar, which is what I normally just put on, I don't, I don't, you can make a dressing, but I don't think that it's really necessary. And these cherry tomatoes, I like to slice open because 
when I'm taking pictures, it actually looks better. But also, <laughs> the part of the, um, the insides of the tomato, like the gooey part, is where the umami is. And so I think it just adds to the flavor of the salad. Oh yeah, so there are two hard boiled eggs here. And so that is, um, or if you have like leftover chicken, or if you have canned tuna, or anything. Sometimes I will buy myself a burger and I'll throw it on top of my salad. So I always just make sure I have some sort of protein, a variety of vegetables, and healthy fats. And I like to have different textures in here. Um, so there's like the crunch of the bell pepper, uh, and the carrots and um, this cucumber. See, these seeds are really big, so I always. Mm. <laughs> this one, I'm going to slice through the middle. This is cough center. See, it doesn't matter. If it's not perfect, <laughs> you can cut it to whatever size you want. Uh, can I get a spoon, Lauren, just to scoop this out? If not, I'll just use the part that doesn't really have it. Or like a metal spoon? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Then I'll just use this part. Because this part... No. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> That's no big deal. Like, and I think this would have been too much um, cucumber anyway to have like. Well, it became that bite. You're hired again. Um, and so then I'm just going to be repeating the different layers. And I like to put. Shallot. Oh, shoot. I didn't even do what I normally do. Okay. Well, <laughs> so what I would normally do, and I could still do it now because we haven't actually tossed them together, is I normally put some sliced shallots in a bowl. Can I grab a bowl really quick? Yeah. Sorry. And then I um, kind of marinate them in whatever uh, vinegar I'm using. And so this looks like red wine vinegar. Um, I really like balsamic, or you can do a combination of balsamic and red wine vinegar. Um, and, that's, and depending on how many shallots you want, or how big a salad, you just put them in. And it takes the bite off of the, the raw onions. Would you onions. do that with shallots, or would you do it with... Oh, you could do red onions. Yeah. Any, any onion that you would put in a salad. It's fine. Um, but I like shallots because I think they're a little sweeter. Um, if you pick a sweet onion, then I think it's totally fine. But there are some that I think are a little too too spicy, or at least for my kids, where they'd be like, Mommy, what is this? Um, so that's that. I'm going to keep layering this. Someone on Periscope said they like to put sliced fennel, and that's also delicious. It really is whatever. This, again, is like um, a clean your fridge out uh, salad. But you're just layering it, and it looks really pretty. See? It's like it, it's better than the... Is that what I was going to say? Sprouts are Sorry. These, I think, are. I think sprouts are fine. I'm actually... I think beans are not the worst thing in the world. I know that some people think that beans aren't paleo, blah, blah, blah. Um, Oh yes, I'm sorry. No, no, and 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 and, <laughs> and it's but that's a good question, and I'm going to segue into the whole bean topic. Is anyone curious about whether beans are paleo, or do you guys not care? Um, <laughs> so some people say beans, um, you know, they contain lectins, and you know, it's all you know bad for your gut. But you know, if you properly soak your beans and you cook them, it's all inactivated. And it also, if you cook and cool them, then it develops resistant starch, which pass through your gut and feed your um, healthy bacteria, which is really important. Um, so I, I think beans 
are not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> but if you don't want to eat them, that's totally cool too. Um, so now I'm going to put eggs. So I do think for one person, two eggs is the minimum amount. I remember going to a, a Whole30 seminar. And I remember Dallas saying, the number of eggs you should eat at one sitting is how many you could fit in your hand. And he has like a giant hand. So I'm like, wow, so you eat like half a dozen. Um, but for me, like two or three is like about the right size. And my kids, my younger son loves eggs. And he, both of my kids eat two scrambled eggs in the morning each. And then because my younger son loves eggs so much, he packs scrambled eggs for lunch um, at school. So he eats four eggs a day. And that horrifies my... Um, <laughs> the grandparents. And so you can cut your eggs however you want them. I normally like to at least quarter them. And you can decorate it however you want. Like you can arrange them. If you have one of those like egg slicers, which I actually do have, you can slice up your eggs that way. And in terms of hard boiled eggs, I have a method in my cookbook and on my blog. Um, that works, but since then, there's an easier method. Like if you, I think um, J. Kenji Lopez Alt, who is my food science guru, he talked about how you can put cold eggs from the fridge directly into boiling water, and that will make it so that your, um, your the shells peel off even though if they're super fresh and they are supposedly the best way to make eggs. And you can also steam them if you want your shells to come off and they're super fresh eggs. So I'm gonna just, oh, and of course you need guacamole. Should I make, should I just make all of this, you think? Yeah. Okay. Have at it. That's all for you. <laughs> I'm gonna I mean, it is a big ass salad, right? It is a big ass salad. All right. So then I'm gonna add all this. So what are your guys' favorite vegetables? Like what, what do you guys always turn to as your go-to vegetables? Green beans. Green beans. Like how do you like to make your green beans? Do you blanch them? Do you, I like them roasted. Roasted, steamed. You should try roasting them the way that I did because they get, um, if you like drizzle them with some sort of fat and salt and pepper, they get like wrinkly and crunchy and it's really, it's really good. Grilled carrots are really good. Roasted carrots are really good. Um, I think that it really transforms and like sweetens them. Rutabaga? I'm sorry, did everyone Oh. All right, so I think this is, I'm not gonna. So everyone should have like a layer of flavor. I'm gonna sprinkle a little salt. So you can put salt and pepper on your salad. But you don't want to do it right until right before you serve it because the salt can um, make your greens wilt. And I have leftover guacamole, so I'm just going to put on the shallots. And if I know I'm going to make a salad, I try to do this kind of quick pickling as soon as I'm in the kitchen. That along with like um, cranking up the oven because the longer they're in there, the better. And then you can use the same um, vinegar. And if you want, you totally can make a dressing. Like you can add in a little bit of um, mustard and emulsify it. But when I'm just, um, when I'm just by myself or <clears throat> It's like a quick weekday. I just drizzle it on. And I do a little toss. And then I add the um, <clears throat> the almonds on at the at the end. And you don't <coughs> sorry. It's that carrot that I tried. <laughs> it's punishing me. <clears throat> And you don't have to go too crazy with the tossing because you made sure you had something on every level. Um, but you want to at least make sure stuff reaches the bottom. 
<clears throat> that's it. The salad, if you're serving more people, I would definitely do more than two eggs. <clears throat> but if it's your own salad, this is kind of like how I do it. And I'm going to add the guacamole. I'm going to just kind of do dollops on the side. But normally I just slice avocado. Salad, I, I probably wouldn't even put eggs in it. Um, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's totally up to you on how much you like eggs. But if it is my lunch, I will make sure that I have at least two per person. I want to put the almonds. So this is like everything. This reminds me of um, I went to school at Berkeley, and this was back when I was like a like a tie-dye wearing, Birkenstock <laughs> and sock wearing nerd. And there used to be this place called Cafe Intermezzo, and this reminds me a lot of their salad. And then it would come with this giant thing of bread. And then I'd feel like that afterwards, and I wouldn't realize, I was like, oh, there just must be some food handling issues, as opposed to maybe I can't eat wheat ever. <laughs> like, all right, so that's it. That's the salad. This again, it has carrots, parsnips, and carrots. Have you guys tried it? Yeah. So it's like a really, it's like, I think it really complements turkey really well or any protein that you have. Um, and then right now, I can pierce through almost everything. The carrots are kind of the, the rate limiting step. So you want to make sure the carrots are a little bit smaller um, because they're harder. And so the liquid in here should be enough to make it uh, nice. I think, I think I'm going to blend it. And the way I... I wonder... Uh, <laughs> uh, I normally just kind of put my blender in and... In different parts where it's, there are vegetables. And then I'll start moving it around because I want to make sure I'm not really patient. Um, I feel like I have a more consistent puree if I go around and like and zap portions of it. And then Lots of different, um, you know, veggie washes. But I think if you, you know, um, if you buy, like, you don't have to buy organic, but um, you should probably avoid the ones that are the dirty dozen and try to buy organic for those items. Um, but otherwise, I think it should be fine just to use water. 
and Thanksgiving, and it'll come up as uh, one of my Thanksgiving recipes. Making a really big mess. <laughs> oh, and I was gonna grab this, and it's not quite high, yet, but that is something to remember with cast iron skillet: is the handle will get hot. So I just stir this around. I'm not looking to make like hash browns and have these super crispy or anything. Um, I, I like there to be some crunchy bits, and then I like to be cooked throughout. Um, and then I season it with basically whatever I have. Um, I think if you have fresh, you know, minced garlic and, and shallots, that's great. But if you just have onion and garlic powder, that works really well for you. Thank you. And as I said in the morning class, if you're going to use a towel as a pot holder, make sure it's not wet or else it defeats the purpose of um, using a towel because it'll be super hot. So how many of you guys use cast iron as your... And what, what are the other people's pans of choice? have a nonstick, but I would have to replace it all the time because I I think I'm just too rough with my nonstick. All right. Yes, that is true. So I like um, I like to sear stuff a lot. Like I like my eggs crispy. I like crackling chicken. I like a nice seared steak. So with cast iron, it doesn't, um, it's not as even. Um, the heat isn't as even as like a clad stainless um, frying pan, but it retains the heat really well. So if you are gonna sear something, you get the super, super hot, and then you can throw on um, whatever ingredient you're gonna sear, and it doesn't bring down the temperature, um, and it'll have a nice, uh, Oh, you know what? That myth was debunked. Oh, okay. There's a really That's great, it. there's a really great article on Serious Eats. Um, if you uh, Google, I think like cast iron skillet myth and uh, Serious Eats, they will. Um, it will come up with this post where J. Kenzie Lopez all debunks all of these myths about cast iron. Okay. And so this one, this cast iron skillet, I think it's probably a new cast iron skillet. Is this a new cast iron skillet one? Yeah. So this is something that I talked about in the first, uh, in my first class, is that even if you buy a pre-seasoned cast iron skillet, it's not going to be perfectly nonstick. Um, and the catch with this is that you just have to keep on using it um, until it develops, um, you know, that non-stick kind of seasoning coat. Um, so you don't season it yourself? Sorry. <laughs> no, no. So I season it. I, no, this is good. So I do season it myself. I have a post on it. Um, okay. You, you can do, awesome. yeah. And I think I used coconut oil in that one because that was back when I used coconut oil for everything. These days I also season it with tea. Um, and... You have to, you have you season it, you can you can season your own, but I actually buy pre-seasoned because at least it has a head start for me. And then afterwards, I just cook in it all the time. Like I'll fry bacon in it, um, and I will just cook a bunch of things to, to, to try to keep um, building up the nice non-stick surface. Um, you have to cook fattier things, and then every time you cook it, um, you know, you can clean it, and you should clean off all the food stuff, but you don't have to scrub it until it's like, you know, you've exposed metal or anything. Um, but then you also have to put like a nice, so you dry it really well, and I put it on top of a, you know, a burner. Mm -hmm. So that's how I dry my cast iron skillet. And then afterwards, I will um, put a very light coat of like ghee or whatever oil I'm using. So this is a perfect example. Like this is a pre-seasoned skillet and it's sticky. Uh, but that's okay. 
you know, you have to get over it because that's what will happen. And it's, you just have to keep cooking. And it will get better. And you just have to trust that. And you just have to be persistent and patient, like in all things in life. But like now, that's all I cook with. Like my cast iron skillet, I love. Like my eggs, I can make super crispy fried eggs and they flip right out. Um, so it will happen.
And I know this is especially true with kids because, like, I say my kids like scrambled eggs, but the way they really like it is like this thin egg omelet that I have seasoned with some fish sauce and some kosher salt. And when they go out to eat and they order scrambled eggs and it doesn't come like that, they are not always happy, but they still have to eat it. Um, and so I always find it really curious because people are so picky and demanding about their egg, um, but it's like they're arguing over something that probably only costs them a few dollars because breakfast can be pretty cheap. Like if you're just getting like the breakfast special, and it's so picky. Sometimes I'm like, oh, people, you're so entitled. So maybe I will. <laughs> oh, so normally. I have a spoon where I can um, I can kind of baste with the oil, so I can cook the whites. Because if you have fresh eggs, normally there's the higher white that's right by the yolk. But in, but since um, I don't have that, I'm just going to flip it, and it'll be eggs over here. Hopefully, I can flip it. So the best way, the best um, type of spatula, I think, for when you need to uh, flip eggs or handle eggs, is a, uh, you can use an offset spatula, those work really well, or a fish spatula are really nice and delicate. Oh, I'm, I'm cold. Thank you. You have found everything. Have questions? I'm gonna turn off Periscope. Goodbye, Periscope people. I think there's like 20.